This is Xbox Tavern's official YouTube channel, the only place for you to get game reviews, Xbox news, tips, tricks for all Xbox fans around the world. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome back. Today we are talking about Greek, the memories of Azure. Let's get into the gameplay and I'll let you know what I think. Take care. Bye bye. Greek, the memories of Azure is a side scrolling single player game with hand drawn animations. You play as Greek, the main character who travels the lands of Azur to find his siblings, Andara and Rydell. During the story of trying to find your brother and sister, you have also many tasks throughout the game where you need to help rebuild an airship piece by piece. During these missions, you fight the Ulag, who have invaded Azur, and they are the reason why the world now looks so miserable, dark and dingy. For all you techie nerds, just to let you know, Greek Memories of Azure is optimized for the Xbox Series X and S. It is 4K Ultra HD, and it also boasts 60 FPS. Now tech specs and part of the story is out of the way, I wanna talk about the gameplay. So as you're going through, you have to find your brother and sister, as I mentioned previously, but you can control both of them at the same time. So you can play as Greek and Andara, and that is by just binding the LT button. One of the sticking points of this is when you're trying to do some platforming during the game. Because each character has their own kind of separate feel, abilities and jump patterns, it's sometimes very difficult to hit that LT button or hold the LT button and jump onto a platform because Rydell will do a double jump and then Dara will do this kind of floaty jump which glides onto the platform so sometimes you can miss time those jumps. Puzzles are a plenty. There are kind of light beam puzzles where you have to move the um, start of the beam onto another platform which then kind of mirrors it off onto another touchpad point which then allows like a moving platform for you to jump on and to jump up to another part of the puzzle. There were far too many P's in that sentence. Um, this sometimes can feel very um, repetitive. Um, I think there was one part of the map where I felt like I had it like three or four times in a row which was a little bit boring. Um, Boss battles, let's get on to boss battles. Boss battles are cool. Um, you have to learn the pattern of the bosses. However, there are ways you can sometimes cheese it. So there is a uh, big boss fairly, just after you find Andara, um, he throws like flames to the floor. You can just move behind him as he's throwing these flames and absolutely hit him to anything. Holding the LT button will allow you to double attack, so you'll be able to use Greek and Andara's powers to kind of absolutely drain his health, um, and this can be done quite quickly. However, you there are frustrations to this fight as well, because if, say, Andara gets knocked down, she that's it, game over, you need to restart again. So save points are quite uh, important for you to make sure you hit those points all the time. If you like platforming, love hand-drawn art styles, and like I said, do like Ori in the Blind Forest, this is a game for you to definitely pick up. Yes, there are some frustrations and kinks, however, I think they absolutely are outweighed by the brilliant storytelling as well as the beautiful looking game. To see my full conclusion, head over to xboxtavern.com. Links will be in the description for the quick link. If you like this video, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel. I've been Daniel, thank you very much, bye.